All right, we're back. And I want to remind everybody that most people stop at 60% effort. Like you encounter resistance and you're like running and you're like, oh, my legs hurt. Or you're working, you're like, oh, I'm tired. Or you're like, want to do something. You're like, oh, that's too difficult. Most people stop at 60% and never realize the full potential of their being. And so keep that in mind next time you meet resistance or you're feeling stressed. Maybe uh, there's another 40% out there and you just have to like go get it. So let's talk about this next one leaving work right now what is going on here dude with funny hair and tie-dye shirt lifting a book if i was there right now we would take five minutes and like break this down and i would ask you lots of questions um but i'm just gonna kind of walk you through the thinking on this one and help you notice things along the way so guy with tie-dye hair or tie-dye hair tie-dye shirt is lifting the book more rapidly on the left-hand side, more slowly on the right-hand side. So lifting that book and then watch what's happening to these equations. Don't let the F with the little A right there scare you. That is just stands for applied force. And so that is an applied force right there. What is going on here? So watch as he's lifting this, the delta T gets smaller, the triangle T gets smaller. And the P over here gets larger. And then let's see what happens on this side. He's lifting it more slowly. The T is getting larger. And the, the variable on the left-hand side is getting smaller right here. Spoiler alert. T, in this case, is time. So there's moving faster, smaller time. Moving more slowly, longer time. And then another spoiler alert right here. This W. What happens with these W's? Nothing, nothing is changing. W in this case stands for work. In this case, he is doing work on the book, a dude with tie-dye shirt doing work upon the book that it, he is lifting. Lifting that book, applying a force over a given distance. One side is going slow, one side is going fast. What is up with this? This P right here, stands for power. So it takes more power. The work is the same. The energy that is transferred to the book is the same. At the highest height, that book should have the same amount of gravitational potential energy stored in it, regardless of how fast it got to that height. So the same amount of work was done just over a longer period of time on the right-hand side, a shorter period of time on the left-hand side. And whether or not you know this, you should know that you somehow know this because like it makes sense. So let's say you're gonna go run up a flight of stairs versus walk up a flight of stairs. You're gonna tire more quickly running up the flight of stairs than walking up the flight of stairs. But at the same height, at the top of the stairs, you're going to have the same gravitational potential energy. You're going to do the same amount of work to get up there. But when you run, you do that amount of work in a shorter amount of time. And it takes more what we call power to get up the flight of stairs more quickly. So the shorter the amount of time that the work happens, the greater the amount of power that goes into it. And this is our next and last concept, our next and last variable or a formula that we're working with. Power is how much work gets done in a certain amount of time. Why does this matter in this unit when we're talking about like power plants and energy and lights and all that? Well, power comes from power plants. And so we're going to talk about how much power comes from power plants as well. And also work is super important because anytime that uh, you transfer energy like in a um, something that involves a turbine, like we saw with the steam and the turbine in the simulation to begin this class. Steam is doing work on the turbine. Steam is creating that electrical potential energy through the turbine. So kind of a little sidetrack there. Hope you could follow along. Power, write this down, please, on your Cornell notes. And you may be on the second page of the Cornell notes. You may be uh, on the very first page. You, um, if you're writing the Cornell notes in these like just big lumps where you can't figure out where anything starts and stops, you need to start separating those things. That's gonna be really hard to find all that later on. So um, you could be on the second page already. That's totally fine if you have big handwriting. I don't know. You should probably be at least on the back page of the first one. Power is how quickly work is done. 
power is defined as work divided by time. And then here's that uh, capital W that we started with here, capital W uh, for Watts, named after James Watts, who is the inventor of the steam engine and really helped usher in the industrial revolution when we learned to, how to harness heat energy and convert it to mechanical energy. And so the unit is named in his honor. One watt is equal to one joule per second. Oh my goodness, what's going on with these units? Well, work divided by time. Work is energy. Energy is measured in joules. There is our joules right there. Divided by time. Time can be measured in seconds. Energy per time. And work divided by time. Joules per second. All the otherwise known as watts. Yeah. What the heck is a watt? You do not need to write this down. You do need to listen to this, though. This is just a way to try to take this abstract idea and make it a little more understandable. A watt is a measure of power, and it is how much work is done over a certain amount of time. So, for example, one watt, if you have an apple in your hand and you lift it off the ground up to a height of one meter, so one meter stick tall, and you do that in one second, that should take one watt of power. However, if you were to take that apple and you were to cut it into a thousand equal pieces and you take one of those tiny pieces, one of those thousand pieces and you put it in your hand and you put your hand now near the ground and you lift that tiny piece one meter in one second, that should take a milliwatt of power. Or you could take that regular size apple that's not cut up and you could lift it one one thousandth of a meter and that would also take a milliwatt of power. Of power. That's just a, a little bit less understandable way of thinking about it. Let's say you take an apple. Let's No, let's not. Let's say you take a million apples, a million apples, which would really require a very large box to put those in. And so you uh, like ate your spinach that day and you lift those million apples from the ground to a height of one meter in one second, that would require a megawatt of power. And that's what uh, electricity is measured in um, coming out of power plants is megawatts. So, and you've seen watts when you think about wattage of light bulbs. So that's really how much energy flows in and out of that light bulb per second. 70 watt light bulbs, 50 watt light bulbs. It's a measure of how much electricity gets used. We're gonna pause the video. And then um, we're going to 